Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, would you please take your seats? We're ready to begin our program. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please take your seats? We're ready to begin our program. All right, let's do this. Please welcome our MC, comedian Jonathan Slocum. Museums Award, 
She is a respected scholar who earned a PhD in anthropology, as well as being a humanitarian and global leader. Joining her is uh, Reverend Gwendolyn Boyd, who served for three decades as an engineer in the Applied Physics Lab at John Hopkins and was the chair of the John Hopkins Diversity Leadership Council. Council. And she's also an ordained minister, former president of Alabama A&M, Alabama State, sorry, Alabama State, and the 22nd National President of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the illustrious co-chairs of the 15th Uncommon High Gala, Dr. Janella Cole and Reverend Gwendolyn Boyd. Make some noise. Uncommon Hype Gala. It is good to be here tonight as we honor Dr. Dorothy Irene Hype and all of you who are friends of the National Council of Negro Women. Dr. Mary McCombathoon's original vision for an organization of women's organization continues to challenge and inspire us daily. And we who are here tonight are all beneficiaries of that vision. To start our evening, the Wardlaw Brothers will perform Lift Every Voice and Sing, the anthem that describes the history and legacy of our people. Please welcome the Wardlaw Brothers, who are from Lyons, Georgia. Please stand as, as we join with them to sing Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty Let our rejoicings rise Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a has brought us facing the rising sun of a new day begun let us march on till victory is won stony is 
of our organization's future. Like Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, like Dr. Dorothy Irene Height, Ingrid Saunders Jones is a builder, a builder of institutions. She built the Coca-Cola Community Affairs Effort. She built the Coca-Cola Foundation. She helped to marshal resources to build the Center for Civil and Human Rights in Atlanta. She is a builder. And so, sisters and brothers, Please welcome the extraordinary national chair and president of the National Council of Negro Women, Ms. Ingrid Saunders Jones. <laughs> Dr. Cole. Good evening, and I join co-chairs Dr. Janetta Cole and Dr. Gwendolyn Boyd in welcoming you to this, our 15th Uncommon Height Gala. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Uncommon Height is a celebration of excellence, a celebration of humanity, a celebration of dignity and pride, um, all of which were lifelong attributes of Dr. Dorothy Irene Height, for whom this evening is named. This evening there are many people to thank. We begin with our co-chairs. Then I go to the NCNW Executive Committee. I thank them for their steadfast commitment we had a meeting earlier today. I'd like to ask all of the NCNW Executive Committee members to please stand. Please show your appreciation for their leadership. Thank you. Our, as, as you heard, NCNW is an organization of organizations called affiliate organizations, and they are listed in your program. And I want you to know that 25 of 33 affiliate or organizations are represented, and that we will be having an affiliate assembly tomorrow. I also have to thank our sponsors. They are listed in your program. You will hear from two and um, see the others scrolled on the screen. Whenever you have the opportunity to support and thank sponsors who support nonprofit organizations, I encourage you to do so. I want to thank the Dorothy Irene Height Foundation. We are great partners, and many of you will recall the release of the Dorothy Irene Height stamp. That was a special moment in the life of many senior adults. And of course, thanking the staff is a month. Janice Mathis, our executive director, is about a year and a half into serving NCNW and is doing a good job. David Glenn, our me membership guru, Michelle Holder, Lori Hendricks, Sandra Green, Lily Hughes, Cynthia Wheeler, and we have another uh, person who has joined us Monday. Her name is Julie Malvo. It's Julie. She's not related to the Malvo sisters, but we love them all. And she will be handling communication going forward for NCNW. Please give the staff a round of applause. We have community sections, collegiate sections, life members, legacy life members, and all of them support and make what we do possible. As NCNW enters its ninth decade, there is much for which we are grateful. We've seen organizations come and go, 
And we are proud to say that NCNW is alive, NCNW is well, and NCNW is solvent. Now that's a big deal. We also come together to celebrate our honorees and receive inspiration from the lives of these two extraordinary people, both representing the epitome of excellence. People have come from far and near to help us celebrate them. Former Atlanta Mayor Shirley Franklin is here to honor her friend Cicely Tyson. Tony Award winner, Tony Award winner Broadway director Kenny Leon is here to assist with that also. We've got HBCU presidents here to pay tribute and say thank you to Tom Joyner for all he has done for HBCUs. The president's representing, yes indeed, Clark Atlanta University, Savannah State, Bennett College, Chicago, Copeland State, and North Carolina AMT. We've been, y'all want to give yourself a round of applause, come on. We have supporters from near and far, and we are so, so thankful. And I wish I could call everyone's name, and, and by name, actually, and say thank you, but I can't. So I'll, I'll close by repeating how I started. Thank you so much for being here. And also, remember, when they ask you about NCNW, tell them that we are alive, we are well, and we are solvent. And that is in part because of the support that you have given to us. And now I want to bring to the podium Ms. Lois Keith, who is a vice chair and serves on the executive committee. Um, she's heading our membership drive initiative. She is an educator by profession. She worked many years with Dr. Height, and she'll tell you a little bit about the success of the membership drive. Please welcome Ms. Lois Keith. And I hope all of you have a wonderful time this evening. Council of Negro Women has more than 200 community and campus-based sections across the United States. It has been my privilege to visit many of them. Tonight, several of our state NCNW officials are present. With all of the National Council of Negro Women state leaders, please stand so that we can show you our, your, our appreciation for your leadership. Would you please stand? All of the state leadership. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. NCNW is engaged in an exciting membership drive, and it is my pleasure to lead the membership drive initiative, which has expanded our membership by more than 1,000 new members since April, and we anticipate even more in the very near future. If you are not a member of NCNW, Diane Larche, where is Diane? Diane Larche, our national membership chairperson, and I invite you to join NCNW. NCNW membership is open to everyone, regardless of race or gender. We have a robust group of men who are also members of NCNW. So yes, men, you can join also. <laughs> it is my honor to bring before you 
NCNW's National Chaplain, Dr. Barbara William Skinner, President of the Skinner Leadership Institute, who would come to give thanks and bless the food we are about to receive, Dr. Barbara Skinner. Gracious and loving God, we pause tonight from our striving and stressing just to say we love you and we thank you. Thank you, God, for loving, protecting, and providing for us, even when we are too overwhelmed by the avalanche of national and world events to acknowledge that you alone have a mountain-moving, miracle-working, mind-changing power to right every wrong in our land. You tonight for the stellar and steadfast work of the National Council of Negro Women and our two fearless trailblazers, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune and Dr. Dorothy Irene Hyde, who open wide the gates of freedom no Washington power can close. Thank you, God, for our national chair, Ingrid Saunders Jones and our extraordinary honorees, Cicely Tyson and Tom Jorner, whom we celebrate tonight for standing in the gap as beacons of light in a world darkened by bigotry and hate. Mm. Tonight, dear Lord, our fractured democracy poses for us the question that Jesus asked the man lying in the same place for 38 years, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? Yes, Lord, tonight we want to be healed of systemic racism. Yes, Lord, we need to be healed of hijacked elections, dysfunctional political parties, black athletes attacked, kneeling for justice, escalating sexual harassment, and an America now so divided that our greatest threat comes from within. Like the biblical King Jehoshaphat facing a powerful army, threatening to bring down his entire kingdom, we say, God, we don't know what to do against this vast army, against this, these momentous challenges before us. But our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you. And now Lord, bless the meals eaten and about to be eaten to nurture our bodies and the fellowship that uplifts our souls. And your mighty matchless and magnificent name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Lord, forgive them for already eating. Don't let bad things come to them, Lord. Now give it up for Martha, Luke, the reason I came, Lord. That was beautiful. And listen, before you eat, before you finish eating, um, I gotta read the tweet that just came in. Shh. Important tweet. I posted I was be hosting this event. I got a tweet that came in from um, Mrs. Trump. And she said, Congratulations, NCNW. I would love to be there because I'm every woman. It's all in me. Anything you want done, baby, I do it naturally. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Give it up for Mrs. Trump, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all enjoy your meal? More to come. Give it up one more time for again. C N W.
we love you and are so proud to partner with you and the important work of NCNW. In the words of our founder, Mary McLeod Bethune, NCNW is an organization of organizations, and it has well represented the national and international concerns of black women. And this is the reason why Coca-Cola supports NCNW. We thank you for your continued partnership, tireless commitment, and your leadership within our communities. All around the world, we see women as pillars of our communities. Empowering women creates a more just society, sows the seeds of long-term prosperity, and spurs growth in our families, communities, and nations. It's why our chairman established our 5x20 program seven years ago. 5x20 has a goal to enable the economic empowerment of 5 million women entrepreneurs across our global value chain by the year 2020. Since 1991, the Coca-Cola system has provided more than $3 million to support the National Council of Negro Women. In 2014, NCNW became a Coca-Cola 5x20 Validated Women's Empowerment Program. Through this initiative, the Women's Entrepreneurship Program at NCNW has provided more than 8,000 women with business skills training, peer-to-peer -peer network mentoring, and financial services or assets. So you can see why we value our powerful partnership with NCNW. And tonight, we're pleased to announce a $300,000 grant from the Coca-Cola Foundation Showing the Coca-Cola company as more than just the refreshing Coca-Cola bottles on your table tonight. Thank you. Imagine how much good one person can do. Now, imagine a business that employs over 90,000 people in the U.S. alone. Imagine a company of that size dedicated to not only doing good business, but good for the world too. We are the Coca-Cola Company. We didn't just teach the world to sing. We are Coca-Cola and so much more. We're an organic tea company, a coconut water company, a premium juice company. We've got drinks for long days, for birthdays, for turning over new leaves. And everything we make relies on the same thing we all do, clean water. It's why for every drop we use, we work to give one back. We're also helping to replenish the Rio Grande in over 100 communities and nearly every corner of the country. Because chances are, we're in that corner too. We believe our business thrives when our communities thrive, which is just one of the reasons we help make college a reality for thousands of students. Today, companies need to lead more than ever. So we're trying to do just that. Thank you for listening. We're listening to you. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let's give my colleague Lori and the Coca-Cola Company a big round of applause for that. Sell a little bit more Toyota so that we can match that big check. <laughs> it's so wonderful to see all of you here this evening. And thank you, Jen, for those kind words and your introduction. On behalf of Toyota, I'm truly excited to join you this evening. You know, it seems like just yesterday that we were honoring the legacy of Dr. Dorothy Hyde, a true trailblazer who dedicated her life fighting for racial and gender equality and justice at the unveiling of the postage stamp in her honor earlier this year. And today, on behalf of Toyota, I'm excited to join in honoring Tom Joyner and Sissy Tyson.
for the outstanding achievements they each accomplished that will also be recognized for generations to come. Now I know that everyone in this room is probably very familiar with Mr. Tom Joyner. In fact, if you're like me, I bet some of you feel like you know him personally. That's because he made a choice years ago to focus his radio show and his platform on the issues that matter most to our community, like voter registration, family health, and veteran education. There is also, of course, his dedication to historically black colleges and universities. His foundation, which Toyota has been proud to support for over a decade, has helped nearly 30,000 students attend college. Now that deserves a round of Now most of you also are probably aware that Mr. Joyner recently announced he'll retire in 2019. I know. I know I'll miss hearing him on the radio. But I believe him when he says that he will continue to work on the issues that we all hold so dear. Now when it comes to Ms. Sister Tyson, let me say right off the bat, I've been a long time. But then again, who in this room has not been? Can we just take a minute to honor the work She's an activist, a tireless supporter of the arts, and of course, a groundbreaking actress. Ms. Tyson was known early on for bucking conventions she defied the stereotypes of the day by choosing roles that allowed her to portray rich, complicated characters. For many of us, it was the first time we even saw ourselves on the screen. And remember, this was during a time when there just weren't that many role models for black women in Hollywood, or anywhere else for that matter. I think this idea of role models is incredibly powerful. Role models show us a path forward. They give us another reason to believe in ourselves. And most of all, they inspire us to be our best selves. And we know that now, more than ever, women of color need strong role models. That's because our ambitions are huge. And actually to say that they're huge is probably an understatement. Let me give you a quick example. A recent report from Nielsen found that nearly two-thirds of black women say that their goal is to make it to the top of their profession. Now we all know that this is something difficult to accomplish and that it begins with education and helping to create access and opportunity. And it's something that I'm personally focused on as a diversity and inclusion leader for Toyota. And it's a passion that I share with NCNW. And it's one of the reasons Toyota is so excited to sponsor tonight's day. We at Toyota share the council's mission to support African-American women with opportunities and services that's needed to reach their goals. To this end, we are equally fortunate that we have the honor of, of having U.S. Secretary Labor of Labor, Alexis Herman, who's a senior advisor to NCNW, who's also involved in the diversity initiatives and with Toyota as she chairs our Toyota Diversity Advisory Board. And we talk about role models. And as Lori mentioned, that Ingrid Sanders Jones, does that correct? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. Is her role model and her mentor. Alexis Herman is also mine. And I thank you so much for all that you do for all of us. Having role models is so important, and having strong inclusion efforts is so important because we know that if we get this right, more women will succeed their families will prosper, and our communities will thrive. So let me leave you with a quick quote from Dr. Dorothy Hyde that still resonates to this very day. What she said was, greatness is not measured by what a man or woman accomplishes, but by the opposition he or she has overcome to reach his goals. Mr. Joyner, Ms. Tyson, we thank you for your greatness. This commitment aligns with our core values of
continuous improvement and respect for people. We recently brought all of our DNI efforts across North America together under one team with a single strategy. This new strategy helps us better serve our customers, current and future team members, dealers, suppliers, business partners, and the communities where we live and operate. Research has shown us that millennials are more purpose-driven than the generations that came before them, which is another reason why our mobility division is so important. To compete for the best talent, we know our values have to match theirs, and we have to make it known that we're a company with a genuine social mission, providing access to mobility so people can achieve their ambitions. As we continue to collaborate around ways to leverage mobility and uplift communities, you may be energized by what we often say here at Toyota. Let's go places. Thank you. 
Council of Negro Women for the eight plus years of service to the black community. Hi, my name is Evelina Rosario, and I'm a sophomore here at Falcon College from Bay Hall, Minnesota. As students attending the historically black institution, we understand how important it is to sustain our organizations that empower our community. Hi, my name is Ashi Bisho, and I'm a freshman at Falcon College. As an interracial African American woman, we have the governance of the dominance of this organization. Today, we are thrilled to celebrate how many words we got. Hi, my name is Michael Sorrell, I'm the president here at Falcon College. That's my three amazing students have made it so clear. We are tremendously proud of the accomplishment of the National Council of Negro Women, and we're also proud of the accomplishments of Tom Joyner, your man of the year. We have been fans of Tom Joyner for years. He has been someone who has supported not just our school, but HBCUs all across the country. So for what we are doing, we can think of no better recipient of this year's honor than Tom. So Tom, we salute you, we are proud of you, we are thrilled for you being recognized today, and we look forward to seeing you again on our campus soon. Take care. No person has done more to shape urban radio than our man of the year. He's influenced me and every other person who's ever done radio over the past 49,000, over the last past 40 years. <laughs> Tonight, how honored we are and how blessed we are that several HBCU presidents have traveled to Washington to help salute Mr. Joyner. Would you please welcome our college presidents, Dr. Terry Ward, North Carolina A&T University. Okay, they're coming, okay. Dr. Maria Thompson, Compton State University. <laughs> Dr. Ronald Johnson, Clark Atlanta University. <laughs> Dr. Cheryl Davenport Dozier, Savannah State University. <laughs> Dr. Lewis Dawkins, Bennett College. <laughs> and Dr. Rosalind Clark Artis, Benedict College. Woo! <laughs> 
This is where black girl magic started for the National Council of Negro Magic. I've known for many years that if you want something done, get a woman to do it. If you've ever been to the Red Velvet Cake Studios in Dallas, you can see the power of women in my life, from my co-host of the Wilkes of almost 25 years, to my executive producer, my head writer, my producers, all the way back to my mom and aunts. Women aren't just powerful thinkers, they are powerful doers. And so we honor the work of the National Council of Negro Women, whose charge was to advance the opportunities and quality of life of black women. And that translates over the years to black families, black communities, the nation, and the world with its impact and influence in policies that affect change. One thing my mom used to say is to always be on your best behavior because you never know who's watching you. When we started the Time Toward Foundation, we did it because it was the right thing to do. I learned from my mom and the people from my hometown of Tuskegee about the importance of giving back. Any way you can, give back, my mother would do, my mother would, would say. My mother did it by typing papers and correcting papers for students and, at Tuskegee. And remember, there was no spell check back then. <laughs> my mom was spell check. She typed on a typewriter and carbon paper. <laughs> Many of you don't even know what that is. Those that do know what I'm talking about. That would make a mark on me, and I, and I knew that my calling was to help HBCU students in my way. Whatever your passion is, make sure it's making a difference in the lives of others. Invest in our future. If not with our, if not with your dollars, with your time or your talent. None of us will be where we are forever. The best thing that you can do is to make sure that we are having a positive impact on those who are following in our footsteps. If everyone did that, we'd have a better world. But everyone won't. And so the charge tonight is to be uncommon. To not only try to reach higher heights, but to make sure that we link our arms and bring others with us. This is my first public appearance since I announced my retirement. And I thank you, thank you, thank you. I said two years. Uh, who does that? <laughs> yeah, two years my, will be my, uh, my last. But before, before, between now and then, we're going to party. And party with a purpose. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate this man of the year honor. Thank you. Hold up, before you end, I'm going to take my whole thing liberty. Real quick, five seconds. You say you never got a slow dance? Right now. You and Amy Sunstone, a five second slow dance.
audition for the replacement. 35 after the hour. It's the Jonathan the Slocum Show. <laughs> no, I'm just serious. Listen, uh. So keep practicing. Speaking of radio and TV, give it up for the queen of TV One, Miss Kathy Hughes is building everybody. Our next presenter was Secretary of Labor during the Clinton administration. She sits on the board of Toyota. She leads the Dorothy Alwyn Height Foundation and was a protege of Dr. Height. She's joined by a Tony Award-winning Broadway and film director whose credits include A Raven in the Sun starring a newcomer named Denzel Washington <laughs> and Argus Wilson's Fences. Mr. Leon is the artistic director of Kenny Leon's True Colors Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. Prior to co-founding True Colors, he served 11 years as artistic director of the Alliance Theater. To present the Crystal Share Award to the lovely Mrs. Titan, please welcome the Honorable Alexis Herman and my man, Mr. Kenny Leon, you know, everybody. Proud 
National Council of Negro Women's Uncommon Height Crystal Stair Award. As a fellow Tony Award winner, I am deeply honored to present to Ms. Sister Tyson the NCNW Crystal Stair Award. Uh, 
on his chains. His spirit must have slightly floated free. Though still about his hands, he felt his chains. Who heard great joy in the road? Who saw her eyes saw a chariot swing up? And who was he? Who was he? Who was he? The chain. And who was he that breathed that comforting melodic sigh? Nobody knows the trouble I see. What merely living clod, what captive thing, could up toward God's wall and darkness grow, and find within its thin heart to sing these songs of sorrow, love, faith, and hope? How did he catch that subtle older tone? That note in music heard, not with the ears. How sound the elusive reed so seldom blown, which stirs the soul or melts the heart to tears. There is a wide, wide wonder in it all. That from the great rest and servile toil, the fiery spirit of the sea should call these simple children from the sun. Oh, black slave singers, mm -hmm. gone, forgot, unfamed, you, you alone, of those who sung untaught, unknown, and named, have stretched out upward. Seeking the divine. I first came to know Dr. Darnley Height in the process of running to answer a telephone, during which time I broke my toe. I said, Whoever you are, I have just broken my toe. This is Dr. Irene Height. It was at the very beginning of my career. I was an actress, and I had no idea who Dr. Dorothy Height was. Okay? Cicely Tyson, I called to let you know the National Council of the League of Women, or the National Council of Negro Women, has voted to give you our award this year. But I didn't do anything, I said, because you know, I was just the type of person who would not accept anything unless I really felt I had earned it. My dear young lady, you are setting a course, even at the very beginning of your career, that lets us know that you are going to be a real role model. Thank you very much, I said. How do I go about getting this? <laughs> we will let you know. She was about to ask me for the address of my agent or manager, but she changed her mind and told me, pardon me, that we would like to send the information directly to you. Please give me your address. And I did. Several years later, Dr. Hyatt really stunned me when she invited me to open the Mary McLeod Bethune House. 
but not the high actors. There are so many other actresses out there who have really paid their dues. Miss Cicely Tyson, she said, you are our choice. And I can tell you today that I will never forget it as long as I live. It was beyond my greatest dream. That day, I remember standing, looking over in these midst of dignitaries that I had heard of, read about, and here I was, standing there, speaking to them. That day, I felt like the sun was shining just for me. Reading McLeod Bethune's charge. What Dr. Hyde did at the beginning of my career was to let me know that I was on the right course. Dr. Hyde was the first one who ever acknowledged that that and that never let her forget it. Sometime later, I heard from everyone I ran into the, over a period of about a week or two, Dr. Heist, looking for you, girl. Where have you been? What is it, I asked. What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Well, I decided that I was going to call to ask what I had done wrong. We played phone tag for a while until I ran into her for a brief moment one day and she said to me, how long are you going to be here? And I'm leaving tomorrow, I said. When are you coming back? I will be back in about a week. When you come back, please come to see me. But something kept gnawing at me and I kept trying to reach it. I mean, I was trying to dig out what it was. And one day, I did. I called her. Dr. Hyde, this is Cicely Tyson. I've been looking all over for you, Cicely. Where have you been? <laughs> I guess we've been playing phone tag, I said. I want you to make a contribution. <laughs> In what way, Dr. Hyde? <laughs> I can't hear you. I think I've lost my hearing aid. I think I've lost it. I'll call you back, I said. Before I could, the operator interrupted, saying, I have an emergency call for you, Ms. Tyson. It was Alexis Herman saying, come immediately. The Hyde has been hospitalized, and it doesn't look good. I jumped on a train, I was in New York at the time, and when I arrived, Lexus told me, go in there and say her favorite poem. I walked in, I took one look at her. She was not mobile. And talk loud, because she can't hear you. We can't find her hearing aid. I climbed in alongside her and I put my lips to her ears. I started screaming the poem. She turned her head from me as if to say, stop screaming, stop screaming, I can hear you well. I think that was a moment that startled all of us because, from my understanding, she had not moved a muscle for several days. <laughs> and, of course, we looked at that as hope. As I sat there and thought of the many speakers that extolled the virtues and greatness of Dr. Dorothy Irene Hyde. 
I began to wonder if anyone really knew the price Dr. Hyde paid for the legacy she has blessed us all with. Lord knows, Lord knows, Lord knows. She has been to the rivers. Known rivers, ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. A soul good deed like the rivers. Yes, she bathed in the Euphrates and in dorms were young. And she built her hut near the Congo and it lulled her to sleep. She looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. And she heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New saw its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. She knew rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. Her soul looked to like the rivers. You know, in the course of my years in this business, and I maintain that you cannot live this life and not become the sum total of all it has to offer. Every breath you take, every tear you shed, every scream you scream, is the sum total of who life and what life has made of you. You can have flaws, you can be anxious, even angry. But the one thing you should never forget is that your life is the greatest enterprise in the world. Only you can stop it from going bust. Many appreciate you, admire you, even love you. But the thing that we strive for most in this world is happiness. One moment of true happiness. Remember that to be happy is not to have a sky without a storm. A road without accidents, work without fatigue, relationships without disappointments. To be happy is to find strength in forgiveness, hope in battles, security in the stage of fear, love, in discord. It is not only to enjoy the smile, but also to reflect on the sadness. It is not only to celebrate the successes, but to learn lessons from the failures. It is not only to feel happy with the applause, but to be happy in anonymity. Being happy is not a fatality of destiny, but an achievement for those who can travel within themselves. <laughs> to be happy is to stop feeling like a victim and become your destiny's author. <laughs> it is to cross deserts yet to be able to find an oasis in the depths of our soul. It is to thank God for every morning, for the miracle of life. Being happy is not being afraid of your own feelings. 
It is to be able to talk about you. It is having the courage to hear a no. It is confidence in the face of criticism, even when unjustified. It is to kiss your children, pamper your parents, to live poetic moments with friends even when it hurts us. To be happy is to let live the creature that lives in each of us, free, joyful, and simple. It is to have the courage to say, I'm sorry. It is to say, I love you. May your life become a garden of opportunities for happiness. That in spring, may it be a lover of joy. In winter, a lover of wisdom. And when you make a mistake, start all over again. For only then will you be in love with life. You will find that to be happy is not to have a perfect life, but use the tears to irrigate tolerance. Use your losses to train patience. Use obstacles to open windows of intelligence. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Especially never give up on people who love you. Never give up on happiness. For life is an incredible shelf. I brought along with me a friend that became very close to me from the moment I met her. She was the woman that Dr. Dorothy Hyde fell in love with as well as millions of people throughout the world. It was she who spoke to Dorothy during those last moments.
So, um, is Tom here? Is, okay, wherever you are, just hold up a glass somewhere. And here's a toast on behalf of NCMW to the legacy and the life of this beautiful icon and the man of the year, Tom Gore. Cheers. Dr. Sandra Gasson. Yeah. 